Restrictive practices in Australia are individual state responsibilities. So that this has always given a lot of room for um, inconsistencies. However, over the last 10 years, Australia has worked hard to um, bring better regulation around constrictive, restrictive practices. Since the um, development of our National Disability Insurance Scheme, so this scheme supports people with disabilities in their needs by funding the, um, what is required to help them live um, a healthy, good life. And in March 2014, our um, Commonwealth, State and Territory Ministers all came together to try and endorse um, the National Framework for reducing and eliminating the use of restrictive practices in the disability sector as much as possible. So under the NDIS, which is our National Disability Insurance Scheme, um, there are certain restrictive practices are regulated. Um, and these include obviously chemical restraint, me mechanical restraint, physical restraint, and environmental restraint. Um, and in 2019, our National Disability Insurance Scheme started in 2013, but in 2019, they produced a Quality and Safeguards Commission um, that created regulate, regulated restrictive practices guides. And this was updated again in 21 and then in 22. So in Australia now, families are certainly um, made aware of uh, or informed about the hyperphagia in Prader-Willi syndrome. And if they're not informed by medicos who may not be so up to date, they will certainly seek it out on the internet in most cases. Um, Restrictive practices in my state, um, New South Wales, we have what we call NCAT. Um, we have a restrictive practices authority and guardianship is also states um, orientated. So we have New South Wales Commission for Tribunal and this um, commission of administrative, uh, sorry, commission and administrative tribunal. So this will assess a person to see if guardianship is required. But if the person up to the age of eight, over the age of 18 is quite happy for family members or someone in authority to make decisions for them, guardianship is not taken out. But restrictive practices are now pretty well accepted for people with Prader-Willi syndrome. And certainly within group homes, we are fortunate to have um, about eight service providers just in New South Wales, the state I live in, that um, service excellent PWS specific group homes. And restrictive practices around food are considered a duty of care. Uh, and I guess we probably support that greatly by saying that people with Prader-Willi syndrome have the right to good health and longevity, um, and also have the right to live an, in an environment that will reduce their stress and anxiety. And we have seen this time and time again when people who with Prader-Willi syndrome who move come out of a situation where they have not had high support around restrictive practices and have been quite unhealthy and obese, move into supported accommodation where these restrictive practices and high knowledgeable support is in place and they have achieved great things. Um, and it's not just weight loss, it's um, a decreased anxiety, decreased stress and improvement in quality of life. So our restrictive practices board, when they deem someone meets the requirements for restrictive practices, and this has to be, um, it's only used as a last resort technically, but a behavioural support plan has to be put in place before restrictive practices can be deemed needed. And they are reviewed every year. So every year we write supporting material for the client saying they still really need this, these restrictive practices. And these reports are not just uh, to keep the practices, the restrictive practices in place, but it's also to make sure that they're not being overused and that the person is not at risk of um, coercion or poor health as a result of the restrictive practices. Guardianship is also reviewed um, most years, either yearly or five yearly. So I guess in Australia, um, restrictive practices are accepted for people with Prader-Willi, uh, certainly within um, the medical support groups and service providers once they understand syndrome and I think understanding and knowledge is so very important for them to realize the importance of achieving good health for people with Prader-Willi syndrome and that it 
can usually only be done with high support, which includes restrictive practices. Um, regarding um, other behaviours such as absconding, certainly um, protective uh, support, I suppose, support um, behaviour management is put in place there as much as possible. Um, even within restrictive practice use within supported accommodation, once the person has settled into that accommodation and they are certainly happy, I can tell you a case study in a moment, these the restrictions can be modified to <coughs> provide a home of protected um, freedom where the person makes many more choices within the firm boundaries that keep them safe. And we all aim to get all our clients to this situation if possible. Um, we had just one case study of a young man who we first knew at 12 years of age, who was 100 kilos. He was the youngest of seven children um, from um, an Arabic family. And we saw him, first of all, for a study. And unfortunately, his family were wonderful and very caring, but they were not able to provide the restricted environment that he needed. And family life is very much around food. So over the next uh, four years, his weight increased to 186 kilos. He had a BMI of 79.6. It then went up further the, over the next two years to 206 kilos, and he was only 16. So we urged our Department of um, um, community and justice which look after children in need we urge them to with the support of the family to remove the boy into a residential service and after a long period of time this came to fruition um, he moved out when he was 16 and a half and over the last uh, four years he has lost 61 kilos so he's doing extremely well and this is a boy who said he would never ever live anywhere other than in his family home and his poor family were most distressed about the fact that we were urging him to move into care but they all have an amazingly wonderful relationship now and he's extremely happy and this residential service is his home he doesn't want to go back to live with his family so we've certainly seen that um, with the correct duty of care and with a lot of support from um, professionals that we can Ask, get uh, residential services to provide appropriate um, supportive care and certainly improve the quality of life and the demeanour and the, reduce the anxiety and improve the happiness of people with Prader-Willi syndrome. Thank you. <laughs>